Hello and welcome to a case study regarding some of the possibilities and strategies for the conservation and revitalization of built heritage from the perspective of an NGO, a non-governmental organization. We are still examining Banfi Castle from Bonsida, Transylvania, Romania, but now we focus on the castle's recent past and present. This is a summary of the experience of the Transylvania Trust Foundation, which has been preoccupied with the fate of the castle ever since its setup in 1996. First, we shall look at the restoration strategy and process of the building ensemble, which as we could see previously consists of various wings and individual buildings. As of yet, the restoration is still ongoing and the buildings need constant maintenance as well. After that, we shall look at the revitalization actions of the Transylvania Trust to raise the visibility and relevance of Banffy Castle, after which we will formulate some conclusions. In the previous two videos, we have witnessed the fate of Banffy Castle during the middle and second half of the 20th century. Through mistreatment and mismanagement, and later through complete abandonment, by the turn of the millennia, the centuries-old historic monument was left in ruins. This was when the Transylvania Trust started to get involved. At first, intervention works were started with funds gained through a Romanian-Hungarian intergovernmental agreement, uh, through which a part of the roof over the main building was reset. However, this had only limited effects. And when Kotalin, the daughter of Count Miklos Banfi, reclaimed the nationalized property, the works could no longer continue. The family finally came into the property of the castle, not of the castle park though, in 2007. This is when the Transylvania Trust signed a concession agreement with the Countess for 49 years, committing itself to restore and revitalize the castle. However, being now a private property, it became much harder to access funds for the restoration works. First and foremost, there was a need to stop the degradation process. Thus, all parts of the building ensemble needed to be protected by roofs and the structure needed to be sound. These two aspects were crucial to stop the degradation and potential collapse of the building. Of course, it is also crucial to follow the proper and legal protocols for restoration, meaning various studies, expert opinions, approved designs and permissions throughout all phases of the intervention. As these are ensured, let us look at the restoration process. The restoration was and is done even today in small steps, especially through the International Built Heritage Conservation Training Center's summer restoration camps, which have been organized at Banffy Castle every year since 2001, with the participation of architecture, civil engineering, art history, archaeology students, young professionals and volunteers that wish to gain a more hands-on experience in built heritage conservation, or that wish to acquaint themselves with traditional building techniques. More recently, it is also attended by craftsmen working in the construction field who wish to specialize on interventions on historic buildings, and the Transylvania Trust has partnerships in place for volunteers that come from all over Europe. The restoration itself follows the principles of minimal intervention and compatibility of materials and techniques. Thus, anyone wishing to learn how to work with lime-based render, for example, which is a traditional technique applied all over Europe, is welcome to attend the summer camps. The workshops offered throughout the years have been traditional masonry, rendering, vault restoration, traditional carpentry, traditional joinery and furniture restoration, stone masonry, and now tin smithing, all under the supervision of experienced craftsmen. As the participants learn practical skills on the site, they contribute to the castle's restoration. And on the other hand, the restoration process provides unique learning opportunities for those interested in this field. Thanks to this dual approach, the program received in 2008 
the Europa Nostra Award. The first building to be intervened upon was the one that was in the worst shape, the kitchen building. In 2001, the works advanced to such a degree that the cultural cafe could be opened at the Round Towers ground floor in view of potential tourist services as well as income. Another function suited for the building part was housing as well as catering for the students of the restoration camps. So rooms were set up in the attic and the kitchen along with a dining hall at the ground floor. The second building that the team turned to was the so-called Miklos building, where formerly the agricultural machinery station had set up its offices. After being abandoned, it deteriorated quickly. So in 2003, when the restoration began, its interior collapsed, leaving only the outer walls of the structure. After restoration, the International Built Heritage Conservation Training Center opened its headquarters here, along with a conference room and other accommodation possibilities. Then came the Baroque Courtyard, where works also started in 2003 and are still unfinished. A tourist information point functions at the entrance, as well as a lapidary, redesigned in 2018 and 19, which will move soon to another more protected location. In some of the rooms, the participants of the restoration camp practice traditional decorative techniques, which is part of the masonry workshop, such as fresco and secco techniques, stucco and sgraffito, as well as marmorino, which is a full marble finish using real marble dust. According to plans after restoration, one part of the ensemble, the carriage house, will function as a furniture restoration workshop. The largest buildings of the Baroque courtyard were the stables and the riding school, built face to face on the long sides of the U-shaped ground plan of the courtyard, serving the famous horses of the Banfi family. Unfortunately, the riding school had already collapsed in the 1950s, for the castle's magnificent stables, by the end of the 20th century, the building had deteriorated greatly, losing all of its vaults, as well as a great part of its pillars. The restoration works began in 2006 with the reconstruction of the roof, while the restoration of the vaults is continuous, offering a unique opportunity for the participants of the restoration camps to learn this traditional technique. Once the works finish, the large hall will be suitable for various events. And last but not least, the main building. The restoration of the entire building was and continues to be an extremely complex task due to its size and the damage that has been produced over the previous century. This building was and is restored gradually. At the moment, it is entirely covered and structurally sane. Some of its parts already have a function as well, such as a permanent exhibition and spaces that can be used for various events. Following these, a question might arise. Why do we restore? What do we want to achieve? And indeed, this is a question that needs to be raised even before starting an intervention. What is the end purpose? For the Transylvania Trust, as well as for the family, the question was quite obvious, although the final form is not always set in stone, to create a place that people like to visit and inhabit, a place set in the service of culture, arts and education, a place that gives back to the community, and not in the least, a place that is self-sufficient and does not rely on external financial resources for its upkeep. Due to the vastness of the building ensemble, actually several future functions can exist side by side, and that is the key of success for this place. It's versatility. Currently, alongside being open to the public all throughout the year for individual and group visits, it is mainly a venue for cultural and educational events organized by the Transylvania Trust, as well as by others. The castle hosts, for example, two important festivals each year. It is also a venue for weddings, team building and corporate events. Some other functions have already been mentioned, such as the furniture joinery workshop. And from time to time, the castle becomes a venue for temporary exhibitions, 
However, more recently, the castle also hosts permanent exhibitions. Let us now take a closer look to some of the actions and events that take place at the castle, which fill this monument with life. Firstly, the castle is a venue for the restoration camps that were already mentioned. This activity takes up an entire month of the castle's event calendar. Lately, it has also hosted various artistic camps and artistic residencies, which were mostly organized through European cooperation projects through the Creative Europe program. The results are site-specific artistic interventions and installations that reflect the creator's take on heritage and traditions, expressed in a unique and contemporary way, which enrich the castle's cultural offer and open it up to new audiences. It is also a venue for festivals. The Electric Castle Festival is the most well-known of these, which is an almost week-long music festival that draws in a large audience, especially younger people, who can enjoy music and arts in a unique environment. We also need to mention the Transylvania International Film Festival, with more special open-air screenings at the castle, for example of silent films, with live musical accompaniment. The Transylvania Trust organizes two open days every year, when people can freely enter and enjoy this historical environment. They can participate at guided tours or at any event that is organized, such as puppet shows and activities for children, film screenings, classical music concerts, exhibition openings, book launches, and so on, depending on the year. In terms of other activities organized by the Transylvania Trust, an important target group are children, the generation who will inherit our cultural heritage. Thus, it is important to create a strong bond between them and our built and natural heritage, which the Transylvania Trust does through a series of activities aimed at school children. The Heritage Days for School Children are one-day events presenting the castle, its hidden treasures, as well as the life of the family at the castle. And more recently, uh, the Transylvania Trust also organizes one-week summer camps for children with various activities that are related to built and natural heritage, history, as well as various skills that children can acquire. Last but not least, throughout the years the castle has hosted a series of temporary exhibitions enriching the cultural offer of the place. As the restoration of the castle advanced, the goal was to also have permanent exhibitions dedicated to the place and to the memory of those living here. At the moment, three permanent exhibitions uh, exist at the castle. One of these is the lapidary, presenting the carved stone collection that has survived the vicissitudes of the 20th century. The second is the so-called experience room, which uses AR and VR technologies to invite children on an adventure, exploring the day-to-day -day life of an imaginary noble family living in a castle at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries. And it also offers a virtual reconstruction of the former castle library. Finally, the exhibition titled Miklos Banfi's Force Fields is a tribute to the colorful and avant-garde personality of Count Miklos Banfi, the last inhabitant of the castle, as well as of its various activities. The exhibition explores and presents his political career, his literary and artistic life and preoccupations, as well as his personal life in the midst of his family at the castle in Bonsida. Finally, let us draw some conclusions. Firstly, it is almost never too late to attempt restoring a historical monument, to take action. At the beginning of this project, many have doubted that something akin to this would result from all the energy invested in a ruin. Secondly, if the usual path or procedure is not an option for you, think outside the box. Also realize that people are willing to help if they think that what you do brings value. To achieve your goal, organize programs and actions that will take you to this goal, in our case, restoration, but that also gives back to people by learning new skills, for example, or to the community 
resulting in a nicely put together historical place that is pleasant to visit and explore. Then, think about use and function from early on. The restoration needs a purpose, a function. It first and foremost needs people to fill it and for them to do something here. There needs to be a need for built heritage. Create partnerships with like-minded organizations and individuals that can help you, or more importantly, partnerships that are mutually beneficial. Bring life to your building. Organize events, open days, children's activities, festivals, exhibitions, other cultural, educational or artistic events. Be open to other organizers bringing their own events to you. Do not shy away from new initiatives. At the beginning, there were many that found that, that the Electric Castle Festival is incompatible with the heritage site. However, the festival has started actually a trend. And in the meantime, other such initiatives have popped up at other heritage sites as well. Finally, cooperation, networking, partnerships and giving back to the community are of key importance for the preservation of built heritage and cultural heritage in general. Thank you for watching this case study. What I've presented is not a precise recipe, of course. These are just some thoughts based on the actions and strategies employed by the Transylvania Trust for one specific castle and site that might perhaps inspire others to take action if they strongly believe in their goals and dreams. I hope that you too found some inspiration or valuable lessons because it is up to us as individuals and communities to take care of our surroundings and of the values that have been passed on by our ancestors. Thank you.